Hello everyone, Stepan here. In this video I'm going to go over the two knights variation of the Karo Khan, which is uh, one of the most underestimated variations for, for white, but still uh, a very dangerous line uh, for black to face. And of course, uh, as in all variations of the Karo Khan, black has to prepare to face a lot of opening theory and you have to know uh, numerous lines in order to be able to play well. And I would say that on a scale from 1 to 10, if the main line is uh, 3, uh, in being complicated then the two nights variation is four or five so way more complicated than the main line uh, slightly less complicated than the pan of but still uh, if white decides to go for this you have to be prepared so in this video i hope i can prepare you for that of course after e4 c6 the caro can uh, the normal move for white the most common move would be d4 and this would enter the advanced variation the pano variation the main line and every other variation of the caro can but in the two knights of course white develops both of his knights starting with knight to c3 and after d5 knight to f3 and this is your starting position and first I'm going to go over the main line uh, of the of the two knights variation, which is black playing bishop to g4, pinning the knight. And after that, we are going to go some of the sidelines. And uh, there are three moves uh, black could play, in, in fact. And I would say uh, the main line with bishop to g4 is the most solid, but there is one sideline uh, which could prove deadly uh, for white if he makes a mistake which looks rather obvious so i would say if your if your opponent is well prepared in the karo khan and uh, he plays the two knights often then then don't try su to surprise him with the sideline i'm going to show you but you have, if you're playing uh, an intermediate player who isn't that well versed in theory then it's worth a try but let's go over the main line first so bishop to g4 this is your move pinning the knight and white pretty much has only one move that's h3 forcing the bishop to take and after bishop takes f3 queen takes f3 this is your starting position and of course uh, what you have to understand from this line if you remember the video on the advanced karo khan this is quite similar to this position and i will put the link in the description below uh, on all the variations of, of, of the karo khan i have covered and if you are unfamiliar with the basics of the opening and uh, the the meaning behind the opening moves i would suggest you watch the video i made on the basic principles of the Karo Khan. I will link that in the description below as well. So the point of this is Black uh, by taking on f3 uh, got rid of his uh, bad bishop so to speak and you could also call it the French defense bishop even though it's the Karo Khan because when you play c6 you are closing down uh, your bishop's scope and you can see that if you have a light squared bishop and your pawns are let's say on c6 and on e6 then the bishop is useless and in the french defense when black plays e6 on move one then the the bishop on c8 uh, starts to be the biggest problem in the position in the advanced karo, karo khan with the main move bishop to f5 before playing uh, e6 closing down the position black is doing the same thing he's getting rid of his weakest piece theoretically in the position and by getting rid of it he's preparing to have a solid solid center in this line of course black did the same thing he got rid of his bad piece uh, in exchange for one tempo of course he wasted the tempo taking you can see that white has better development two pieces developed black has none but when black plays his next move he will have a perfectly playable and in fact equal position out of the opening the only move for black here is e6 and with this you have created a, a triangle of pawns in the center which is really hard to break up and if white ever captures on d5 you can then of course capture with with either pawn slightly better is to take with the c pawn of course taking towards the center but you can see that white will have a hard time breaking through black's position and from this position on uh, white has four moves he could play uh, well, there isn't really the main line. In the two knights variation, uh, all four moves have been played. There is only one move that uh, is slightly worse for, for white, white than the other three. Uh, the most commonly played move is d3 in this position, a solid approach by white preparing to, to open up his pieces, to develop normally castle kingside, in some positions even play g3 bishop to g2, and have a slightly better position out of the opening, being a tempo up, having better development, but with no real attacking prospects. The main line would continue uh, with knight to d7 by black, solidifying his position, preparing to develop. Of course, there's no pressure to, to develop fast and you have time to maneuver. And after bishop to d2, uh, let's say g6 by black, you have to you have to develop normally. And then uh, white castling kingside, bishop to g7, g4. White has a slight edge. He has uh, he has more space on the kingside and more space in the center as well. But once again, it's really hard to break through. The second most common idea uh, that 
white could play after knight to d7 and the more fighting idea is queen to g3 and that that does two things first of all it's reducing the scope of your dark squared bishop and uh, preventing it preventing it from developing on the most natural square be that being the d6 square and secondly you are unable to develop the bishop first of all because your g pawn is dropping so uh, black with no will normally continue with g6 trying to fianchetto his bishop castle kingside develop the knight uh, to e7 and in some positions even strike with f5 and once again black has a perfectly playable position because white is unable to penetrate the pawn structure in the center this is the main advantage of the two knights uh, for for the player playing with the black pieces however white of course uh, can capitalize of, of he, on his development on his lead in development if black isn't careful but just remember to follow the normal plans of fianchettoing your bishop you can see immediately that it will be a monster on this diagonal because white doesn't really have a way to contend it that easily and just follow the opening principles in some position you, positions you can strike with b5 b4 create sort of a minority attack on the queen side and even sometimes advance with d uh, d4 c5 and break up white's structure in the center so this would be the the main line after after white plays uh, d3 on move 6. Uh, so d3 is the main move. And I would say that that's slightly passive. For white, there are better moves. So after e6, the most advisable continuation for white and the most aggressive one, and of course, if you are playing with the, with the white pieces, you should play aggressively for an advantage, that would be d4. Immediately striking in the center, conceding to the fact that, that black could capture the pawn and Black does, in fact. I will uh, just let me return return to one point in the d3 line I, I forgot to mention. After d3, uh, and uh, black playing knight to d7, which is the most common move, uh, that actually doesn't have to be played. If you were wondering, uh, can black play knight to f6? He can, in fact. And uh, this move is not such a big threat, because after e5 and knight f2 to, to d7 this position is better for black because he can always strike with c5 and you can see that black has an advantage here uh, white center is collapsing simply because it can't be reinforced with c3 as it can be in the advanced karo khan before the knight gets developed to c3 so this position is favorable for black and uh, black uh, black should be happy if white decides after knight to f6 to to gain a tempo with e5 so this is this is an okay position another option that uh, that black could go for instead of knight to d7 or knight to f6 is bishop, bishop to b4 immediately and this line is also okay so after d3 black has a few fighting chances i would say that knight to d7 is the most solid one knight to f6 uh, isn't that good because after after the move d3 you want your knight to be on e7 to prepare f5 and to to hold on to your d5 pawn so knight to f6 is an okay provocation but if white doesn't play uh if white doesn't play e5 then your knight is commonly misplaced and you have no room to develop and of course you want your other knight on on d7 anyway so this is another downside of course you could always always play knight to a6 and prepare c5 but i think knight to d7 is the most the most solid way to continue for black if white plays d3 let's return to d4 now after d4 of course uh, black takes on e4 and after queen to e4, uh, of course, uh, taking with the knight drops the, the d4 pawn, which isn't lost for white, but white shouldn't give up pawns that easily. So after queen takes e4, if you assess this position now, you can see that black has uh, one major asset in the position. And that's the fact that he's holding uh, white down, preventing him from playing the, the move d5, which is a very common idea. And of course, uh, you can see that the center can even be reinforced. Uh, one major advantage that you have to that you ca have to capitalize on is the tempo you are able to gain on the queen. So knight to f6, and after queen to d3, knight b to d7. And you can see in this position that black is perfectly solid. He will uh, castle either kingside or, or queenside. Of course, castling kingside is safer, but castling uh, queenside is okay as well, depending on white does. And after g3, white is fianchettoing, bishop to e7, bishop to g2. You can also, by the way, after g3, develop uh, your bishop uh, to the d6 square, which is more active. But black can, uh, white can always challenge it with bishop to f4, and that does work despite it, it ruining white's pawn structure, because then white will have major pressure on your g7 pawn, which will now be undefended, and you will be forced to castle queenside. And in some positions, white can immediately then strike with a for a5 and break up your your whole structure your whole board and uh, your king will be unsafe so uh, developing to e7 is is simpler and safer so bishop to e7 bishop to g2 castles castles and if you start assessing this position now you can see that white doesn't really have an opening edge 
if you try try to think of a plan for both sides black has a clear plan as always in the in the Karo Khan that's to push c5 and that's one thing you have to you have to work on it's possible to do it now but you probably don't want to exchange queens if you're going to for a win and of course you don't want to blunder uh, your b7 pawn before it's defended so do something about that and then c5 is your plan since the bishop is on g2 of course uh, b7 is dropping so that's your major plan sometimes even uh, e5 can work as a break but before that I would advise rook to e8, bishop to f8, perhaps even g6, bishop g7 if needed, but just remember then that c5 and e5 are your ma main breaks. So that's d4 uh, for white after e6. That's the most uh, most most fighting way for, for white to play. The third option is g3, and uh, this of course prepares to, to fianchetto the bishop immediately. Of course, if knight to f6, uh, once again, uh, white is ill-advised to push with e5, because of the same reasons mentioned before, if e5, knight f to d7, d4, now c5, you are breaking up the structure, your position is almost completely winning, because uh, this bishop has prepared to develop to g2 and now it's dead for the rest of the game so it will have to remain on this diagonal thus uh, g3 was a waste of tempo and we are also wrecking white central structure so you are simply much better the best move after knight to f6 is not to concede to the provocation uh, to play e5 but to develop uh, your bishop to g2 and simply continue with this uh, diagonal being open and that's a great a great way actually for uh, black to provoke weakness after g3 always play knight to f6 and i think i have faced this position probably 20 or 50 times i don't know in blitz games and so often white will play e5 that you can't even you can't even imagine how often this mistake is made because it looks natural you are gaining the tempo but what comes afterwards is much uh, better for black in fact even winning okay uh, so g3 doesn't uh, doesn't really work for white uh, i mean okay it does work but i i think that's the worst continuation and the position would normally look like this e5 knight to e4 of course after after you develop your second knight to the d7 square e5 is much better because knight to d7 can't be played so after e5 you play knight to e4 of course increasing the increasing the pressure on the c3 knight and from this position on white will commonly castle and you play bishop c3 b takes c3 and once again uh, uh, Engine, engine wise, uh, white is supposed to have an advantage, but uh, practically speaking, black stands great. Uh, you have you have a great knight on e4; it can be taken by the bishop, but you always ha you you always have the possibility to play f5. And if white takes ampasan with e takes f, then playing the d knight to f6 and solidifying your position. So I think black has great fighting chances. Let's just look at the position. These are the most common moves, of course. This line uh, after g3, bishop to g2, when uh, white doesn't play e5, immediately gaining a tempo on the right, is supposed to be slightly better for white, and you have to be careful, but if you are careful and you don't blunder b7 or lose your pawn in the center by letting white capture on an e4 and then recapture the pawn with the queen, you will be okay. In this position you just play b5 and after queen to g4, which is now preparing to take your knight, you play f5 and after e takes f6, uh, knight d takes f6, queen takes c6, okay, is a pawn down for white, but still the position is completely playable. And then, engine wise, uh, after king to h8, uh, this pawn with queen takes, uh, queen takes c6 uh, shouldn't really be taken because now black will have a lot of initiative. So after queen to a6, uh, then knight takes c3, attacking attacking the rook, and you will at least gain, gain the dark squared bishop or or have a solid uh, equal position but this line uh, should be uh, should be studied the most i think if white plays uh, g3 on move six you have to be careful if after knight to f6 he plays bishop to g2 because this could lead to a lot of trouble a lot of trouble for black but if black plays well then the position is unsound for white i think even though okay you shouldn't really trust the engines in the opening and if the position is 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 is absolutely irrelevant from a human perspective and that shouldn't discourage you for playing a line and if you look at grandmaster games and the games of the top 20 players they often enter positions which are which vary from 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5 and that that doesn't really mean what much if you understand the position so just remember that in this line you have to be careful about white capturing your pawn twice 
Remember that you play Ampas, if white plays Ampasan here, you, you take with the D knight, even though your E pawn is dropping. And uh, white should, of course, never be, never be tempted to take this pawn because you have great initiative. And you can see that your structural. Uh, your structure is uh, superior to white, you have a lot of attacking prospects, your knight is a monster on e4, if white, rec if white captures you can recapture back. If he ever tries to dislodge your knight with f3, then the, the, G, uh, the g3 pawn is critically weak. Okay, let's go back. Uh, after the move e6, uh, the fourth most common uh, continuation for, for white is to play bishop to e2. And after bishop to e2, this is uh, the most passive way for white to play, but it's still okay. You play knight to f6. Once again, e5 is uh, is a bad move because of knight to d7 and c5. So castles, knight b to d7, d4, d takes c4, knight takes c4, knight takes c4, queen takes c4. And this is your common Karo Khan position. This you, you can see from the main line. You can see from, from many positions in the Karo Khan. Uh, and this is your most common structure you will have. And most often you will uh, exchange your light square bishop, which happened here. You have a favorable position because of that. You have a good structure with c6 and d6. You have your good bishop open on the diagonal. You are going to castle kingside. You're going to play queen to c7 or queen to b6, pressurizing b2. And your position is perfectly solid. So this is what happens after bishop to e2. Uh, now let's go back one second to the sidelines. So this was the main line with bishop to g4. And of course, you just have to remember that uh, white's options uh, aren't, uh, aren't limited, of course. White gets to choose a lot of stuff. But all of that happens after these moves. Uh, h3, bishop h3, queen to uh, bishop f3, queen to f3, e6. And now white chooses either d3, d4 g3 or bishop to e2 and you have to know all the lines once again uh, as in all of my videos i will recommend that you find some games on chessgames.com find some find some games online study at least 20 to 50 games in each line to make sure you are prepared and do that over the board don't do it on on your on your computer screen because Playing it over the board will give you your own ideas and you won't be tempted to use the engine. And in order to understand the position, you have to think uh, with your own head without uh, the help of an engine. So uh, on move six, uh, white gets to choose the line d3, d4, g3 or bishop to e2. And this is if black goes for the main line with bishop to g4, which is perhaps the best, but perhaps you can surprise your opponents. Let's go back. So after knight to f3, you don't have to play bishop to g4. Uh, the most common sideline is in fact d takes e4. And after knight takes e4, you play knight to f6. Uh, white, of course, capt of course, captures. You have to take with the e pawn. And after d d4, you can see that uh, black's position, posi po position is perfectly playable. You're going to develop your bishops to d6 and to e6. Castle short and have a, have a solid position. So the line would continue like this. And you can see that once again, uh, your pawn on f6 is actually a strength, not a weakness, because it's preventing the knight from entering key squares on g5 and on e5. You have two monster bishops staring towards a uh, white king. Your knight will come to, to d7, to b6, and try to uh, try to mess up white's queen side, so your position is okay. But I think that after knight to f3, d takes e4 isn't uh, a fighting enough line for black and it doesn't give you that many prospects. Even though this position is solid, playing bishop to g4 or on, on, move, on move 3 gives you, gives you a lot more chances. So I would say that this isn't the best way for black to play. So don't be tempted to, after knight to f3, take the e4 pawn. Uh, one tricky line for black after knight to f3 is to play knight to f6. Uh, this is one of my favorite lines. Um, of course... One position uh, has to be highlighted. First of all, white may be, may be tempted to play e5. If white plays e5, you play knight to e4. And now, uh, the most common uh, most common mistake in the Karo Khan that I've seen so often is uh, white capturing on e4. And that it isn't immediately losing, it just makes uh, black equalize. And very comfortably that is. So uh, if uh, white takes on e4, then d takes e4. Uh, knight to g5, you have to keep defending, and uh, white has to play knight to g5. If knight to g1, that's, I mean, are you conceding to a loss already or what? So that wouldn't work. And now black plays queen to d5. And after queen to e2, he has to defend his pawn some more. He has to uh, attack your pawn. You play bishop to f5. G4 is the best move, and now bishop to g6. And you can see that 
White has overextended uh, on the on the king side. White is attacking your weak pawn, but it can't really be taken yet until it's attack attacked by another pawn. And in fact, even after bishop to g2, uh, the the e5 pawn is dropping anyway. So after queen takes e5, d4, queen takes d4, uh, knight takes e4, and h5 by black. You can see that um, the the material situation is one pawn up for black, and there is actually no other way for white to save the position but to sacrifice a pawn. So remember that if uh, in this position, after knight to e4, if white takes, you are winning a pawn. So knight takes e4, d takes e4, knight to g5 has to be played, queen to d5, queen to e2. Uh, of course, in this position, you can take the pawn immediately, but you have to you have to defend your pawn first if you want to stay material, if you want to be material up. So bishop to f5, and now uh, white's best try is is. Uh, is g4. Of course, if white tries to defend at any point with f4 or d4, you simply take Ampassan and this is reinforced with the bishop and this is just absurd because it's weakening your king too much. So g4, bishop to g6 and now the, the e5 pawn is inevitably dropping, bishop to g2 trying to attack. Now queen takes e5 and taking uh, taking on, on e4 immediately is bad. Uh, the best move is to play d4. Uh, if you take on e4, then okay, your position is slightly worse uh, if you are white because black immediately strikes with h5. So you can now see that white's position is getting opened up. Uh, black is going to play knight to d7, castle long, and just crush white. So even though the engines will tell you that black has a slight, slight, slight advantage, practically speaking, this is much easier to play. So this line uh, you have to remember if you want to surprise your opponents. Knight to f6 uh, is a great way to play. And if you don't go for bishop to g4, which is supposed to be the most solid engine-wise, knight to f6 is a great alternative. Just remember that after e5, you play knight to e4 and you hope that white takes. However, the, the solid way for white to play and uh, the way that, which keeps white... Uh, uh, his opening advantage is bishop to e2, and this is now a normal position. Bishop f5, castles, e6, d4, knight takes c3, b takes c3. You can see that this is almost the advanced Karo Khan, and in fact, uh, it's it's one exact position from the advanced Karo Khan, so you have to know that position as well. Uh, check out the video in the description below. Okay, so I think I have covered all the main variations of the two knights, and of course, uh, the, the opening is very complicated. Let's go over the opening moves once again. e4, c6, knight to c3, d5, knight to f3. Now the main line for black is bishop to g4, after which uh, the game continues with h3, bishop f3, queen f3, e6, and white can play either d3, d4, g3, or bishop to e2 from the main line. However, if uh, after knight to f3 black doesn't play bishop to g4, he can either take with d takes e4, which isn't the best, or he can play knight to f6, which is a great way to play because after e5, knight to e4, uh, white can uh, have a solid position with pawn to e2 and you enter the advanced Karo Khan, or he can blunder with knight takes e4 and give black a lot of initiative for that. Okay, uh, I hope you understood the position. I would advise you to watch the video a couple of times and once again, of course, uh, try to play out the games yourself. Find example games and uh, practice the position. That's the only way to learn. And I hope you got something from this video and that you, are, you understood the, the two nights variation of the Karo Khan. Thanks uh, very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye.